Yeah, well, I couldn't make that work. Look, I'm not going to sell him for less, all right? Come on, man. Remember the birthday party I threw for him? Come on, he loved it. Absolutely loved it. We're like brothers. He's like the son I never had. You know what? I'd like to think that me and him are close enough. If he wants to talk to me about it, get him to talk to me himself. All right, cheers. Bye. Yeah, I hope he sacks you. Yeah, all right, bye. <sighs> Fabio's agent. They're not happy that he didn't get the move. He's still here. But there have been some more additions. I'm excited for season seven. It's going to be good. Hello viewers, welcome to Season 7, and yes, the main man is still here. Fabio Silva, now 23 years old, £120 million came in for him in the summer, which I rejected. I never got a bid close to that again. I actually, the biggest bid I had afterwards was £87, pound, uh, 87, pounds, 87 million, pounds, and I was not willing to take that at all. We all know that he is a much better player than that. So, he is still here, which means I was a little bit more limited in the transfer market than I would have liked to have been. But, I'm still happy with the business that we've done. As always, let's start off with the sales. To be fair, there haven't really been that many this year, so we're going to roam through this really, really quickly. Uh, Emil Aldero and Nikola Milenkovic both went for free as they ran down their contracts. I tried to get them back in next year, last year, but they weren't having any of it. Jean-Pierre has gone to Huddersfield for £19.75 million. Bukayo Saka has gone to Aston Villa for £22 million. Pounds. Bit disappointed I never really got to play them that much. Uh, Declan Rice has gone to Monaco for £24.5 million. Pounds. This is the one that kind of feels like the one that got away. He is an elite midfielder. He is very, very decent, but he was just now going to get into my midfield, especially with some of the additions I've made. I've actually been looking at playing Ayer now as a defensive midfielder because I don't think that he's good enough really to play at centre-back at this level, and I have rectified that. Um, but Declan Rice just feels like the one that maybe got away a little bit, but he was never happy at the club, so I had to let him go. And the other big sale that we made was Arta. Um, on paper, very, very good. Never really did it for me. To be fair, I don't think he's very well suited to the Premier League in the sense that he's not really physical enough, I don't think, to keep in the Premier League. From a technical point of view, he's absolutely brilliant and mentally very, very good, but just never quite did it for me. Sold him £36 million, which I don't think is too bad a deal. But don't worry, I've made four new signings, and I'm sure they're all going to be very, very good. The idea this year was very much adding to the core, and obviously with Aldera going, I brought in Dean Henderson at 28 years old. Yeah, he's not brilliant, but at the same time, he's not bad. He's a very good kind of second... Uh, string goalkeeper, one that can fill in and do the job. He'll actually be playing today, um, mainly because uh, Donnarumma is injured again. But I'm happy to get Dean Henderson in, also adds to the British quota. Useful. Speaking of English quota, hello Chris Jones. Yes, sign this boy in from Derby for £33 million. Pounds, I have to say, he looks provisionally excellent. He's only 19 years old, technically he could probably do a bit better, but mentally exceptionally good at this age. 16 leadership, 16 determination stands out. Positioning of 15 is very good and physically very capable as well. Very good going forward. And I did say I've been looking at the centre-back position. Hello, Luka Mihalovic. Right, we, you know what, actually, I'm going to sort myself out here. Luka. There you go, we'll call him Luka. Not like Luka Modric, don't get confused. Physically, amazing. Mentally, amazing. Technically, for a defender, amazing. He's very, very Good. There is no getting around it. He will only get better as well. 22 years old. Signing for £55 million in from Lyon. Very, very happy with this signing. He just looks the mutt's nuts, actually, in terms of a centre-back. And he'll probably be our number one centre-back alongside Matthias De Litt. So, ah, oh, feeling good this year. And the big signing that I made over the summer, and £84 million got me Luca Engler. There's another Luca, but I can say Engler, so it's fine. He looks excellent, okay, but I know we're, we're all going to think, we're all going to think, oh my god, you spent £84 million on him, what about Yusufi, the wonder kid that we saw in the last one for Mainz? Well, for a start, I'd already bought Engler before that happened. The board said that he was a really, really good signing, would be very, very good for us going forward, so they're the ones that conducted the deal, therefore I couldn't stop it once it got going. He's very good defensively. He's more of a defensive midfielder. Probably a bit of a replacement for Declan Rice. And I think that it's going to be useful because I'm going to make a couple of changes this year um, going forward. We have a lot of depth now in that midfield, both attacking and at the back. And I have to say, I think Luca Engler is going to be a very useful signing going forward. He can also fill in as a centre-back if needs be. And yes, I would have gone for Yusufi, 
but he went to City. So City managed to sign him for £78 million. So, yeah, they probably got the better player. But I'm not too worried about it. He'll probably go and sit on the bench because he's got Mbappe and all those ahead of him. But he just looks phenomenal. City this year are the team to beat. There's no getting around it. They won it last year, so we need to try and keep up with them again this year and hold, hold well, try and hold on to their coattails, really. So that was the summer in a nutshell. A bit disappointing because I didn't really have the money to spend. Uh, the Fabio Silver one would have given me the ability to go and get Yusufi, but obviously because that didn't go ahead, he is still here. And I still think as a squad, we are now better and more well-equipped than we were last year. So today, we are playing Burnley, and we've had to make a few changes in Forced. You can tell Donnarumma and they're both injured at the moment for around about two weeks each. Hopefully when they come back, we'll have a full strength team. Until then, it's very much the team that did as well towards the tail end of last year, with the exception of Dean Henderson being in goal. Uh, Tierney's at left back. Ayer and Wood maintain their place as the centre-backs in the team, while uh, De Ligt is out injured, and obviously Luca is on the bench. But I didn't want to throw him in. His match sharpness isn't 100% yet. I'll probably try and integrate him into the team as we go along. Aaron's is at right back. Chris Jones is on the bench. Uh, similar reasons, really. Torreira and Bentley are probably still my first choice central midfield pairing, just because they've been exceptional together. Uh, in the tail end of the last year. Davies, Armada and Padrino, of course, make up the midfield three. In by Ablas, who's leading the line today, and he is still in exceptionally hot form from over the summer. Temas, the big boys, already won United, who are going to be very hard to stop this year. Pelegri's already got himself a hat-trick. They beat Everton 4-1. Chelsea beat Watford 2-0. And Liverpool are playing Southampton after this. So, there's a lot of competition this year it is safe to say and we're just going to try and do our best to hold on to the coattails and get there we're very much a team now looking forward to the future i think in a couple of years time or maybe next season this could be a team very much to be reckoned with we're still incredibly young and it's the storm outside so if you hear any kind of weird noises it's mainly the storm outside and i'm also a bit disappointed that city and west ham isn't going ahead today because i have aguero and kevin de bruyne in my fantasy football team so i don't know when they're going to come back in and it's ruined my weekend a little bit but hopefully this will cheer me up. Uh, Burnley finished very well last year. Had a very good season. They've got Milan up front. is very good. Dwight McNeil has become quite good. My heart. My Lambi is a player we all know can get very good. And so is Renato Sanchez. So a team we need to watch out for. But ultimately a team we should be beating. And that is exactly what I'm going to say to the boys. I expect to win. We finished the season off very well last year. Minus the last four games or so. But the second half of the season we were a completely different team to the one that started off the year. I'm hoping this year we get off to a better start, and who knows, maybe we'll be in and amongst the title, yeah, the title race at the end. We, we The only way to find out is to play it, funnily enough. I also apologise if it sounds I'm a little bit bunged up. I do have a cold going. It's just going around everywhere at the moment, and it seems unavoidable. Everyone at work's bloody got it, so naturally I'm going to get it. It's Sanchez here. Ben's one. I mean, that's, that's not exactly how I want to start my season. If you just drink your tea, Mike, it'll go away. Well, that's disappointing, isn't it? James Gardner there plays into Sanchez and we just give him all the time in the world just to pick one out and I mean like it wouldn't matter if Don the was in goal he'd never save that either it's an absolute worldie and uh, we won nil down within six minutes <laughs> oh no don't do this Bentley back to Torreira Torreira knocks it in and it's not really fun to anyone there Bentley into Ablas and he's in it just why I can't Sasha you are my man I've put all my faith in you this year mate the eggs are in the Ablas basket the Ablas kit no no it's not going to work Another set piece. Terrell whips it in. Bat post and somehow Nathan Woods managed to head over from literally three yards out. But at least we're pressing and we are making chances. And you kind of feel like it's only a matter of time before we do get our goal. New Year. Same old save. Dominating the game. What somehow won down from the fact they've had one shot. So, uh, it's fine. Alfonso Davies now whips the ball back into the midfield. Can we just create something? Torreira to Bentley. Bentley does want to run away from his man there. Kieran Tierney on the ball. Back to Bentley. Bentley into Kieran Tierney. Tierney back to Bentley. This is good play from us here. Bentley, great ball on top. Ablas, brilliant goal. Well done, lads. Tiago Mada and Ablas linking up. Lovely knock down by Ablas. Great finish by Tiago Mada. Keeper should probably save it, but who gives a toss? It's worth noting as well, their goalkeeper, Duas, is actually a player I was looking to get uh, instead of Dean Henderson, but he did go and sign for them in the end, so I'm glad that he's kind of mucked this one up a little bit, if I'm honest. Brilliant finish by Thiago Amada. Get in. Well done, boys. Much, much better, and we needed that before half-time. We've got so much more potency this year now. I do feel that scoring goals wasn't really as much of a problem last year. It was more the fact that at the back we weren't very good, and we just conceded too many odd goals now and again. Hopefully that won't happen this year. 
Ablas here down the wing. That's a pretty poor tackle, but he's done well to ride it as Ablas, and he plays into Pedrinho now. Pedrinho, the white men haven't really got involved in the game yet today. As Aaron's hits one, great save by Dewhurst, and Diaz just about manages to clear. Brilliant effort there by Aaron's on his wrong foot. Superb. 1-1 one, one at the break. A little bit unlucky to say. Oh, I think we're safe to say. So we can still win this. Keep working hard and it will come. Uh, and let's get a little bit passionate with the boys. Say, I want you to prove everyone wrong. Tell me that you've got what it takes to finish, play for this club. So apparently people are thinking that we're not really good enough. That's a bit upsetting. Aaron's on the ball. Into Almada. Almada. Back to Aaron's. Aaron's. Into Bentley. Bentley. To Torreira. Good ball there by Torreira. Looking wide. Davies on the ball now. Into Kieran Tierney. Tierney, back to Davies, Davies, he drives into the box, whips it in, now blast, bang, there it is, it's his third goal of the season, obviously counting what happened in the Club World Championships, we are the best team in the world, I might like to add, we are winning 2-1, and Alfonso Davies has picked up right where he did at the end of last season, assisting, scoring, everything, great ball in here by, Abla, um, by Davies, and a superb header by Ablas, but 2-1 up, get in boys, well done, most important thing about this game is that we've absolutely dominated it, and that's what I really like, Torreira over a free kick, whips it in, Ayer at the back post doesn't get there, but Simba Bentley does. He scores. It's 3-1. We are absolutely giving Burnley the runaround. Get in! This is such a good goal. Torero, his delivery is always brilliant. And Bentley just gets there out of Ayer. Hits into the back of that. Great finish. Get in, boys. Great ball by Torero there into Ablas. And he's got so much pace. He's just danced away from the defenders. A hit to... What a goal by Sasha Ablas. Oh, who needs Fabio? Sorry, mate. You might have to stay on the bench. Because Sasha Ablas is an absolute... God, he's so good. Torreira, great ball at the pitch. Ablas here, just absolutely roasts his man. And um, how he's got it in from here, I'll never know. The, the sheer power. I love a striker that finishes with just sheer power. That is beautiful. 4 1 from 1 0 down. Get in. And time to make some changes. Torreira's going to come off, and Engler is going to come on for his debut. And I might also bring Luca on for for Wood, actually, because Ayer is still our captain. Let's see if we can get Luca kind of bedded into the squad. I know, obviously, I think we're all expecting like a big summer bonanza, but one thing I deliberately made a point of is that I didn't want to bring in six, seven, eight new signings and just basically start with a brand new team. The nucleus of the team we had last year, you can tell from the second half of the season, is actually very good. That's not the problem. The problem was just trying to get those players... Um, a little bit more quality in and around them as we're going to take off Padrini and bring on Nicolas Pepe for the last 20 minutes or so. And so I'm quite happy with the way that we've done it. I've just added to the squad but kept the nucleus of the side the same thing. And I'm going to try and just like bed the people in gradually rather than just chucking them in like I've done in previous years. As Alfonso Davies heads it straight at Dewhurst. It's well held by the keeper but you'd expect him to save that. Alas, obviously in search of a hat-trick at the moment. As Armada whips it in and Pepe just heads it over the bar but we are playing some scintillating stuff going forward. And if this is how we're going to be playing for the rest of the year, I'm going to be a very happy man. We're top of the table! Ablas. And now it's Engler. Bentley. Bentley. Engler. Lots of great... What a ball that is from Engler. Aaron's is in. Ablas. There's the hat trick. Anything that Peter Pellegrini can do, Sasha Ablas can do as well. Great goal by the Arsenal. The football there was scintillating. God knows how many passes that was. It's all the pass from Engler here. It's this one here. Oh, in behind the defender. Wonderful ball. And Ablas near post, great header, he does not miss from there. What a goal by Sasha Ablas, what a team we are assembling here. Three minutes of add-on time and nearly up and what has been a very comfortable game so far for the Arsenal. We started off a little bit slowly, but my god, did we turn it up. Just yes, what a performance. Patrick say a very nice victory, well done boys. Absolutely pumped them there, love that. And of course I'm going to praise Ablas. Three goals and an assist, he is the main man. I, mean, I look at his attributes, I think, yeah, he's good, but he's not brilliant. But he's just so consistent, and I love it. Ah, well, that's put me in a supremely good mood, and you can touch it. We have a nice start to the season this year. Um, say it low-key, but these are games I really would be expecting us to win. The Everton away one's quite difficult, and we don't have a great record against Huddersfield either. So, it's about if we can get well, do well in the away games this year. Maybe I'm going to look at maybe a slight tactical tweak in how we do it, and I might start playing Engler as that kind of deep line defensive midfielder I'm not 100% sure yet but we'll, we'll see how it goes over the first couple of weeks at the moment hopefully we'll just ride off on the high of that but you can tell here we've won every single game that we have played so far this season and in pre-season so long may that continue next episode I think you've already seen it Old Trafford awaits and so does the first game of our Champions League campaign can we go one better this year or well, technically two better get to the final and then win it who knows but I'm very 
very excited. I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching the episode. If you have enjoyed it, of course, then please do leave a like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you think of my signings in the comment section. Let me know how disappointed you are that we couldn't sign Yusufi. There will be other players, and you never know. If he gets an upset at City, we might be able to nip in there and get him. Or I might just sign Mbappe instead. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching the episode. Until I see you in the next one. Stay cool. Come on, you gunners. Yeah.